Okay, tell me the story. I want to know how you met your woman. That's what I want to know. Right there. Come on, tell tell it. Don't so, hold back either. All right. Well, um, actually, uh, I brought this up because you asked about it yesterday, and I was just thinking, who would be the best one to tell? Would it be uh, Would it be me or would it be Katrine, my wife? And uh, so I was... Uh, thinking about this, and I uh, looked over at my books that I have, all these books that I have, and I saw her memoir that she had written called uh, Inward Bound, which I'm going to give to you. Oh, okay. I can tell you. No, I have, I have, I have a, a community house that I'm collecting books and stuff like that. But I can't click a lot of but you'll be giving some books. And I, but I'm you've not... got to read it okay, because okay. it is it is a very mm. fascinating, mm. fascinating uh, book. It's it's her, uh, it's pretty well her spiritual journey. It's a journey from sense to soul. That's right. Mm. How do you pronounce your wife's last name? Genou? Uh, Genou. Genou, of course, French, of course, yeah. And, um, ooh, She's a hottie, my goodness. Well, why do you think I got together <laughs> with her? I mean, what a silly thing to say. <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, that's that? okay. So, uh, in, in the book, she does explain how we got together. But it was, we've known each other. We've been together, you could say married, for uh, 13, 14 years. Mm. But we've known each other for probably about 30, 35 years. Mm. And it all started, actually, because we were students of Dr. Mills. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. I, don't mean, I really didn't mean to enter. But you just said 35 years. So you, you, you have known Dr. Mills for, 30, you knew, for 35 years? A little longer. Really? Yeah. Oh, keep, keep talking. Let, I'll, let me not interrupt. Go. So, well, I'll, I'll just get into the, uh, the area with Katrine. Mm. Um, and I think she, she probably explains it a lot better, but, um, we, uh, she, she, I, I was originally a piano student of Dr. Mills and I've seen mm -hmm. people come and go and Katrine came, she was a, uh, um, searching mm -hmm. and she explains it very well in her book here, but she, uh, uh was a, uh, training as a dance therapist. And um, so over the years, we 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 uh, really didn't have any contact. The main focus was what Dr. Mills was saying. We made a prom, and I realized that we made a promise. Each one of us, both of us, made a promise within ourselves that the main focus of our life would be self-realization, mm -hmm. and we weren't going to. Um, be interrupted by extracurricular activity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we we knew each other, but we didn't know each other very well. So we're talking about an extreme, uh, I don't want to use that word, I don't have the right word, but extreme form of discipline is what, oh, what yeah. I'm hearing. You know? Yeah, I, I uh, was, mm -hmm, I was, we were dedicated, as, as most of the students were. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, moved along through the years, mm -hmm. and and uh, it became more more involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Doctor and then we lived together, this is when it began to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. We we shared a house together with about four or five other people, mm -hmm. and I got to know Katrine. I got to know her quite well, and uh, was very attracted to. Her mind, her her beauty, mm -hmm. her inner dedication, mm -hmm. because that reflected within myself that dedication, and in a way, you know, you attract not only what you like in somebody, but maybe what is really within yourself already. What seeks its level, kind of thing, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I guess you, I say water seeks its level, but I don't want to 
knock you off fourth. But let me just, I have to ask you this essential thing, I guess it's a regular thing. So her last name is sort of like French. She's French, no? She was born in France, yeah. Okay, and, but you were born? In, I was born in Canada. Oh, I mean, where in Canada? Toronto. Oh, to- <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The fig doesn't fall far from the fig tree. Okay, I understand. I understand. The fig is still t- attached to the tree. <laughs> well, my parents uh, are Ukrainian. Oh, okay. okay. And my father came over, uh, uh, I guess, very early uh, in the, I guess, in the 20s. <clears throat> my grandparents also. My mother was born in Saskatchewan. And she, she left uh, the farm very early in her life and uh, moved to Toronto. She well, actually, she left when she was 15, mm. moved to Toronto and, and uh, I guess during the depression, supported, uh, helped to support my, uh, my grandparents. Mm. Uh, and her brother, she had about five, four brothers and a sister, four or five brothers, I can't, can't recall right now. <clears throat> Eventually she met my father First they got married and I was born. Yeah. <clears throat> so you want to try to let, let me just now you said that you became a student of, of Dr. Mills, but my, uh, somebody told me uh, maybe it's maybe it's just rumor, but you were a, a pianist before that. What's this? I, mean, I was um, or a musician before that. I was a musician before that. I actually was very serious into class. What uh, it almost is a misnomer. But a classical accordionist. Oh, cool. that's the Ukraine thing, isn't it? Then don't they? Do um, the, isn't that a no? A, a Eastern not Europe, European thing? No. Uh, yeah, it's it's European, uh, very Mexican, uh, South American. There's accordion is all over the place. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, I I uh, I had a cousin. I think I was about five years old that I had a cousin that played accordion. I didn't know any other instrument. Just accordion. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, when yeah. we moved, when my mother remarried because my first father died, mm. we we moved to Oshawa, mm. and um, somebody said, if you if you wanted to, they in front of my father, if he wants to play an instrument, what would he play? And I said, accordion. It's the only one instrument I knew at the time. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I didn't know piano. I didn't know anything. You know? I, 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 let me just apologize way ahead of time. But, you know, there's this new movie out, or thing out, about Weird Al Yankovich and how he got the accordion where somebody was running around and they, he had a choice between some something and an accordion. So you're, I'm not saying it's parallel lives, but I'm saying that it's kind of interesting how people pick up the accordion. It's yeah. always somebody else's suggestion. Let me put it that way. Well, it was... It was I guess it was suggestive. I mean, I just loved, okay. I liked the fact that he played and it sounded great. So I got this, this teacher. Now, of course, we're way out of line here with, with how I met Katrine. <laughs> I don't want to put that point. We're, we're, we're going with the stream, the flow. But the, okay, so, so you, you take up the accordion. So how do you switch over to become a Well, I, I, played, I played the accordion for about 10 Ten years. When you say you played the accordion, was was you in a, a I want to say a band, but was you in an aggregation that had that needed the accordion, or how did, did you no, just play I, on your I, own? I had uh, I had a very unique teacher. Uh, his name was Mr. Dickinson, and he was my first mentor. You might say he took me under his wing, and um, so it was partly because of his. It was like almost like a second father for me, and partly because I was good. I became the, sort of the the star of the of the school. Um, and well, this was, was this high school or was, was it high college? What was it? No, it was uh, high school, early, early okay. high okay. school. And uh, <clears throat> he would always say, you know, Glenn, it's really important you p- treat people well. Mm. The scales of justice always balance. You mm. can't do to somebody else that it's not going to come back to you. Mm. Treat people well, mm. treat them fairly. And the other thing that he would always say whenever I said, "Hey, Mr. Dickinson, how you doing?" Mm. Nothing but the best, boy. <laughs> Nothing but the best. <laughs> Never would he say anything other than that. Mm. It would always be so. It sort of carried over. And then when I, 
I uh, eventually left home, moved to Toronto, going to the Royal Conservatory, studying music, teaching on the side. You know, this was... Well, what, what instrument did you teach on the side? Accordion. Oh, what, what? Hey. Don't... <laughs> It's the only instrument I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, okay, but still, was there some weird big demand for accordion playing? At that time, yeah. Really? The accordion was the instrument. It was cheap. It, uh, pianos were expensive. Mm. Um, the, uh, the people were, uh, there were schools all over the place. Mm. Mm, mm, so mm, mm, uh, it was it was a big thing, and and I was very serious. I was fortunate enough to have uh, um, an instrument which enabled me to play Bach on it, as well as uh, uh, the the regular polkas and the other things that you know you would associate with it mm. with accordion. And I was thinking to myself, I need to learn how to perform. I need to do this. Mm. I need to find out more about it. I should probably study piano. Oh, okay, so it came to you. You're, you're, you're the one that had the bright idea to go to piano. It came to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I was called by, uh, well, actually, this started years ago. Uh, about three years before, before I moved to Toronto, I played uh, in a teen talent showcase in Oshawa. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a... Uh, uh, a piece, a harpsichord piece that Bach had arranged uh, from a uh, flute concerto and he arranged it for harpsichord and I was playing it on accordion. Mm. <clears throat> and that are they related? When I see harpsichord, I, I think of the little uh, the air thing or whatever. Are they, are they closely related in terms of... Harpsichord know, and flute? Yeah. No, no, no. Harpsichord and accordion. <laughs> accordion and harpsichord? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, okay. There's no... Crossover, sorry. No, yeah. the accordion is probably cl more closely related to the organ. Oh, okay, stop. Now, okay, you're right. I'm I'm musically illiterate, but when you say organ and you say harpsichord, that's that's a that's an association. Now you talk. Never mind. Go ahead. Let's so what you say. <laughs> well, the organ is uh, uh, works with air and bellows, mm -hmm. and uh, the older organs, what they call portative organs, had reeds. That vibrated like this, All right. mm -hmm. and the air would go through, and you vibrate. With the accordion, it's almost like a portative organ. You have the bellows, mm -hmm. which move back and forth, and you have reeds, which are really. If you took the reeds out and started blowing into it, you'd have a harmonica. It was a harmonica. Mm -hmm. So it's inside the instrument. the The air goes through. You pull out. You get one sound. You push in. You get it. The same sound or I mean there's I can't get into it because there's so many different kinds of accordions mm -hmm. but what I did was do a transcription like like the pianist would do a transcription uh, of uh, a Bach harpsichord piece mm -hmm. he played and because I could play keyboard they were both there were keyboards mm -hmm. on the accordion I played uh, I transcribed it onto accordion this this harpsichord piece so I was playing at this school, and I had a memory lapse. Hmm. And stopped in the middle of the piece. Hmm. Pretty frustrating. And then finished it and, uh, you know, was dejected. After the performance, I thought, well, I guess it's time to go home and kick myself. Hmm. So um, suddenly somebody comes up and says, the uh, adjudicator wants to talk to you. So the adjudicator came up, and he was there with a friend of his, and uh, said, you know, we were going to choose you for first place. And I was telling, to, telling my friend here, boy, if I could work with him on piano, we could really do things. Hmm. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so it was really encouraging because she said we couldn't give you first place because you stopped. Mm -hmm. um, so keep up, you know, keep up the work and everything. So three years later, I'm, I'm, uh, I get a, this phone call from my accordion teacher was, who was somebody else mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. And he said, Glenn, can you do me a favor? I want you to 
I'd like you to do this audition for the Registered Music Teachers Association. I, I'm, I'm a member and I'd like you to play. Uh, I guess what it does is add some status to the, to the teachers. Um, you know, resume. Sort of a resume, you might say. So I said, well, okay, I don't really want to. At that time, I was going through a, a few a few things mentally, and I, I just didn't feel like I, I could do very much. But I said, oh, all right, for you, I'll do it. So, but I can't make it at this time. He said, well, here, you call this person and, and see if you can arrange it at a different time. So I called, and the person in charge, I guess it was the secretary, had to talk to the adjudicator and said, well, okay, he'll see you at his home. Oh, okay. So I thought, okay. So the interesting thing for me anyway, and it's always been something that meant a lot, the day before I had that adjudication, the night before, mm -hmm. I was in a real state mm. and nothing was going right. I had uh, suicidal tendencies. I was living in a board in a rooming board, rooming house. Uh, I, I felt there was no purpose in my life. Mm. Nothing was coming together and it was like, what am I doing? What am I doing here? So I, I wrote a little poem about a merry-go-round and about wanting to get off it. And I don't know where that thing is, but it, then I got down. I never, since a little little kid, I hadn't been praying. I got down on my knees and I just said, if there's anything, if something can change in my life, please, God, you know, let it change. Mm -hmm. So the next day I'm driving along, going to this audition, drive in a driveway, and the first thing I do is run over the garbage cans. I have nothing to say. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then there's this, I thought, oh, great. I guess that's it. Mm -hmm. So I drive into the driveway, and I open the door, or I knocked on the door, and the adjudicator lets me in and, and uh, come into this little house on 283 Hollywood Avenue, and Beautiful, just you know, everything. There's this grand piano on the side. There's other object art, something I hadn't seen before. Mm. Then I started. He said, "Well, here, get your instrument on and play." So I played, and then he said, "Did I hear you three years ago in Oshawa playing the accordion?" And I said, "Is that you?" That was Dr. Mills. Oh. Oh, so Dr. See, Mills says, is that you? Yeah. Here's the funny thing. I'm sorry. Okay, I I'm said, sorry. is that you? No, but you said, okay, I'm sorry. Let me I may have this let, all let, let, me, let, me, let me stop. Let me just show you what went through my brain. I, when I hear Dr. Mills' voice, when you say, is that you? That's how Dr. Mills talks. Yeah. You see? So I'm just, I'm just, if, well, if you say, is that you? Well, if Dr. Mill said it, that you, somehow that, I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> you know? I, know I know what you mean, because uh, I, I edited it, but I said, I recognize your voice, because he had, you know, this deep, resonant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, voice, and that was the only thing I remembered from the, uh, from the... Uh, three years before. Three years before, uh, you know, standing in the hallway... He's talking to me, and it was like the most soothing thing that you, mm. you could have. Mm. Mm. Uh, and then three years later, mm. I played this uh, you know, this uh, piece, which is a totally different piece, to mm. a, a composition written for the accordion, mm. really hard, challenging, contemporary, hard, no, uh, no key center to it. Um, in other words, it didn't sound like anything incredibly melodic. It was very rhythmic. And he writes his report, and then he asked me the question, 
did I hear you three years ago? And I said, is that you? Do I, re I recognize your voice. Somehow we were brought together and I immediately asked him, would you teach me? Would you take me on as a student? Full piano. For, well, Full initially, uh, initially I just said, would you take me as a student? That's all you said? That's all I said. Well, I've got to get to this point. Did you mean as an accordionist, which means that you thought that he could teach you accordion? Or what? When you say student? Well, you, that's the me? interesting part. I, I said I was looking for somebody. And I was looking for a piano teacher. But I, would you also work with me on accordion? And he said, I don't know anything in accordion, but perhaps, you know, I can listen to you and we can work on some musical ideas. And then the, the next thing I asked to go to the washroom, I tell him that I'm really interested in photography. I love beauty. I want to capture beauty. And he turned, he looks at me and says, Glenn, most people don't realize beauty is within yourself. And I had this momentary earthquake happen in my mind where just everything just shifted all over the place. I became really dizzy. And I went to the washroom. And I came back <clears throat> and he talked to me for an hour. Hmm. And I don't know what the heck he said. I don't remember a thing. So I'm, I asked how much he charged. He told me, I gulped, and this, this was on my way out. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, it was much more than I was paying. And he said, don't worry about it. Just come for the lesson. And I'm driving away, and I thought, holy man, I just quit my teacher my accordion teacher, haven't even mentioned anything to him. Now I've got to go and tell him. And, but I've got this incredible opportunity. And I'm, as I'm thinking this, I'm crying all the way mm. along the 400, along the 401. And I get so involved in the considerations, I've run into a little snowbank. So not only do I run over garbage pails, but I run into <laughs> No, but then everything's okay. I drive, drive on. And uh, you need a little symmetry on a the trip there, you know. Yeah. yeah. So Dr. Mills did work with me on accordion, and I learned so much. And then at, at the same time, we, we had piano lessons. So it was about, turned out to be two, sometimes three-hour lessons. About what year was this? What, what, what time frame are we talking about here? This was probably 67. Really? Oh, okay. That's a, okay. Okay. Well, look, oh man, Glenn, look, we're going to um, end this here. I'm going to call this, I'm not going to call it anything. Uh, we, we, but at some particular point, uh, we have to continue talking about, t continue talking to you. I find you an extraordinary, I mean, in every sense of that word, that long word, those two words put together, extraordinary uh, person. And, and, and even if I can't continue talking to you, you need, it would be a good for, for humanity, a good for, for flows and, and trajectories for you to continue to talk to someone or talk to yourself or something like that, because... Your story uh, uh, can help can help the beauty that you seek. So if you can just well, I, I thank you. Um, I have been writing. Katrine is okay. actually putting together a uh, maybe this will encourage her uh, a anthology of various stories of students who who have had experiences early experiences with Dr. Mills. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've, I've written a few things, but I, I, I appreciate your in, encouragement because you sometimes take what you've gotten for granted. And 
of late, and this is really something mm -hmm. that I appreciate you for. Just yesterday, before I came down and met you for the first time, I've been looking and really looked into myself and I thought, I need to find out what I'm supposed to do in this stage of my life and where am I going and I need some sort of, I realized I was asking for a sign mm. and I, I think that, you know, you've, you've, you've uh, tweaked something within me, mm. which I appreciate. And I want to read something that means, oh, means something yes, so much please. to me. Because Dr. Mills at one time <clears throat> um, had various st students. Mm. He never really thought them himself as a teacher mm. of things. Mm. He shared his, his life experience. Mm. And how else would we identify ourselves but as students of, of that? But I don't believe that he ever considered this a teaching as such. It was more of a, as he called it, an unfoldment, mm -hmm. uh, an, an unveiling. And if we really tuned ourselves to what was being said, we felt that. It was like an unfolding. Mm -hmm. So he had, at one time, people came and he would give a private talk. Mm -hmm. And this one is a result of a private talk that he gave me. And I've read this, I have memorized it, but I don't want to um, chance at this point to get it wrong. This is from uh, his very first book called Given the Praise. First one, okay. What, what year was that? This was... Mm, probably... 19... Copyright 1976, so it probably okay. started in 75. <laughs> Called Green Light. <clears throat> the past and the present and the future are all hung of the on the wheel of time. To the God consciousness, there is no past, present, or future. There isn't even the now. But infinite mind, ever mindful of its own, is able to see all that is. It is man who, gracefully given his share of the kingdom as the prodigal, wanders in this world of illusion and has his past, his past lives and his past links. Yet he knows somewhere deep within the recesses of his heart that he must return home, and thus he sets upon a highway, and not the byway or the bypass. It must be direct. If he is correctly motivated with sincerity, he knows that the angel of the Lord has gone before him, and thus all the lights are green. When he returns to the homestead, he realizes that the journey was that of a pilgrim who, with his accumulated knowledge and acquired faith, is able to relax in the realization that his meanderings have been a teaching which he brought upon himself by feeling, by following the leadings other than those of his God-being. Wearily, he returns to the point of acquiescence, where he says, So help me, God. And thus a condition of acceptance is opened unto him, and the angel of the Lord appears. He realizes that all that is hung on the clock of time has brought him to the timelessness of his divinity, which has always been wound up and ready to sound forth when the wanderer relaxes in the shattering proclamation, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The son who thought he wandered now realizes that the understanding of his at one with his spark 
of divinity within is all. And that which confronts him without is nothing but the sequence of holy events strung upon that which he created as his own necessity to complete his circle upon the clock of time and return to the center and circumference of his being. That man, no longer a wanderer, but at home in his divine estate, walks transformed and transfigured, seeing if he wishes the play, but knowing as Christ consciousness that he never did leave heaven or earth. Wow. Wow. Much appreciated.